It was very like a traditional Hollywood script, Charlie Ware's arrival in Bath. Who was he, the newspapers asked. Where had he got all his money? Was he the front man for some mysterious organization? Was that why he was buying up their city? And what was he going to do with it all? He held wild parties at his home in the Royal Crescent. Parties which went on till dawn. Having bought a large hotel and the Theatre Royal, he allowed long hairs to take them over for even wilder parties, which they called festivals. This Victorian mansion was to become a recording studio. More long hairs, no doubt. Everything he did, this Gatsby of the West Country, everything was news. What's very interesting about cuttings and things is that somehow, when you start from the first one, and then it goes on building up, and each time a bit of the last article is tagged on, so that eventually this kind of Frankenstein monster is created. As far as the press goes, I suppose they have, um, they have little to write about, and I suppose it seems something to write about. Because I never know. I found it, in fact, very embarrassing, because I built up a whole sort of dossier of jolly champagne-giving... I mean, really, reading my own bits of paper, um, one gets the impression of a horrible person, absolutely loathsome, you know, in every way. The Bath Arts Workshop, yeah, they, they, they... I suppose they heard that I was a sort of possible person to help anyway because I owned property and I clearly wasn't um, hiding behind strings of companies and so they reckoned that maybe I might be able to help and that's really how it occurred. This is a little charity do. It's an aid of the Bath Arts Workshop, a fairly amazing local community that has formed in a sort of amoebic way over the last few years. And uh, they've got a festival starting next week, which is their third sort of full-scale festival. And um, they said, you know, can we use your house? And uh, so I said, right, let's have an evening out. Tell me what sort of people are coming. I really don't know. A lot of councillors have been asked and different sort of people in the town. Um, so I'm not sure. The alternative society and the straight society? Yeah, I guess. You know, one hopes so. I mean, a lot of the straight people may back out at the last minute, but you never know. But Bath is really very nosy. Everybody likes to know what's going on, you know. And uh, so there are going to be a lot of people who won't want to miss it. Did Whatever it is. You know. find it very difficult to communicate with, with capitalism, you know, they have a, clearly being young and being idealistic, they obviously don't like the system. How uh, does your sort of philosophy vary to that? Well, I don't know really, I mean, I, I was an artist for, um, I suppose about, you know, a mature artist from about 1958 to uh, about 1966, you know, 65, 65, when I went into business. And, so the bulk of my life has been, I've been involved with uh, teaching and with um, ideas, you know, so that in a sense I see there's very little difference, although practically I suppose I've learnt a secret of making money, but um, that isn't all that difficult because in fact everyone has to deal with money and uh, 
I just thought that it'd be an interesting notion to see if one could make money and actually try to uh, make some of one, one's ideas real. I don't care what's right or wrong And I won't try to understand I've had a weekend house in Bath since 1964, but in the 60s it wasn't possible to convince bankers that it was a good commercial proposition. And in 1971, the motorway to London opened, and all that changed. It became a commercial proposition. But I wanted to do more than just make money. I wanted to help save Bath from the Bathonians, many of whom wanted to pull down and rebuild half the city instead of restoring it. And I wanted to recreate in Bath the vitality it had in its 18th century heyday. But obviously the property investments had to be viable before I could attempt the other things. It hasn't been jolly champagne swilling all the way. Usually, it's been very hard work. I mean, I suppose no one had actually bought as much stuff in Bath uh, on the open market as, as I did. I mean, it, it did help to create a market. And, of course, <coughs> because the property boom came at that time on top of it, the whole thing escalated, you know, far beyond the sort of level that it should have. Is it fair to say, then, that in 1964 you were in debt to the tune of £10,000, but by 1973 you were worth what? You my own assets, you read. Yeah. Yes, uh, about three quarters of a million, I suppose, something like that, 800,000. So I had the sort of idea that I would be a real millionaire one day. The press were always saying, millionaire or self-appointed millionaire. I, I pointed out to them, I never said I was a millionaire, you know, but it was one of their obsessions. People are very obsessed by the idea of people being millionaires, you know. Actually, the idea of a million pounds of gold, you know, sitting on a table. Well, Kingsmead is a very interesting block. It was designed by a bloke called John Strong and was built in the early part of the 18th century, I think 1728. It occupies a very important position physically in the city because if a block like Kingsmead Square was pulled down that side, you would then have the whole of the modern architecture, as it were, kind of penetrating even further into the Georgian infrastructure of the city. I think the council, because 